we're going to keep going with the tutorial. This is the second part. If you didn't check the first one, go to my channel and check it out. So you will learn how to create this. We're going to keep on working on details, fine tuning things. Uh, but um, for starting this video, the second part of the tutorial, we are going to take care of the background. We will be integrating everything together. So let's continue with it. So before I tweak some things on the bottle that obviously need to be tweaked, uh, and then I will add the label and, you know, I will finish the bottle. I want to start integrating it with the background and the base. So I'm going to add a background. Let's choose a nice color, something like this. I'm going to call it background and I'm going to put it down to the bottom. I'm going to lock it. I will see later on if I want to make a gradient or, or you know, additional things to it, which I might. I might even change the color of it. Now I'm going to make kind of like a placeholder for the shadow. Let's change the color here, something like this, just to start getting some feeling of how it will look. Something like that. I'm going to duplicate this and I'm going to give it a Gaussian blur, a bit of radius with the Gaussian blur. I'm going to convert it to curves so I can manipulate the notes, otherwise it wouldn't be possible for me, nor for you. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'll just go see in a bit how it looks and tweaking it, convert to curves. Otherwise I cannot manipulate these notes. Something like this. Probably something like in here and moving this also in the direction the shadow is going. For the time being, I'm gonna leave it there. It's not finished. <laughs> it looks bad, I know, but uh, it will look better later on. Now, um, this is making me really nervous. This doesn't look good at all. So I'm going to tweak a bit the label, this following the rounded shape of it. Um, something like that, even a bit more I can, I can do it yep, like this. Uh, mm, I'm going to pull this one up first, a bit more and something like this yeah it looks better now 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 i think i'm gonna work in this color because i'm not very convinced let's do uh, something similar to the background maybe now i'm gonna use a gradient because i want the bottle to have volume so the light is coming from the from the right side mm. Uh, and again, be careful with the banding, okay? Be very subtle doing this because otherwise the banding is going to be showing and you don't you don't want that. See, this is the banding. Uh, it looks bad. So you have to be very, very, very careful with that. And I'm going to work a little bit more on the background. Mm, something nicer. Okay, I think this looks quite okay. Quite okay. Nah, okay. Now, um, I'm going to tweak a bit some of the things we saw in the very first video. Uh, maybe instead of linear, I'm going to add uh, another gradient, uh, an elliptical one. Because in this way I can just play with two handles. Perfect. I think it looks pretty good. Um, I'm going to add a node in here because I'm going to zoom in because I want 
this to come slightly over because I want this to come slightly inwards holding option I move this handle like so if you have problems with uh, the use of the pen tool just check my profile you're gonna find lots of information in there in order to learn how to use it when I say my profile I mean any of my profiles on the internet or my website or or even my YouTube channel um, that's kind of good but I'm gonna make it more transparent and even a little bit more of caution blur, something like that. So it's subtle, it's there. Now I'm gonna duplicate the shape. I'm going to flip it and I'm going to move it to this side uh, just to use this part also the same way. I'm gonna tweak it a bit because probably light is not going to reflect the same on both ends, on both sides. And this is another thing I always do. I just fumble with the backgrounds changing time and again and again and again. Uh, somehow I'd like it to have some relationship with the label. Now I'm going to keep going with my fine tuning, which is an important uh, part of the whole process. Okay, I think that's good. Um, let me zoom out. What I don't like is that it's not following the, the shape of the bottle. I'd say this shadow is not perfect, but, um, well, Shadows are hard, <laughs> and if you don't get them right, <laughs> things are not gonna look very, 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 very realistic. Um, so one has to be very careful with them. Like for example, in this area here, it has to be darker than when it goes fading and casting away, because, well, this is the, the area where the light hits less. So, yeah, that's the only way you're going to make it uh, look like it's uh, standing on a base. But it may take you a while to just get it right. Because, as I say, shadows are hard. <laughs> I think I'm going to leave it like that. I don't want to spend a lifetime on it. Um, just be playing with the same things we mentioned before. Gaussian blur, gradients, or um, transparency tool. And just... Uh, take a reference if you have some around to look because it's worth looking at a uh, reference it, it would be easier you something like this and like that I'm gonna I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna stop here now otherwise I may spend a lifetime with this shadow thing uh, yeah something like that I'm gonna just move this because I don't want it there and I think this is more or less ready to go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now we're going to take care of the label. All right. So after tweaking some more um, the placeholder for the label, you can see in here I made this um, more of a straight line. 
and this one I didn't touch but here I put um, the shadow it's stronger now here we have the highlight I left it as it was I'm not completely happy with the shadow but <laughs> let's leave it like that and let's concentrate now on the design for the label which is one of my favorite parts and I think you'll see why <laughs> because it's really really nice so I'm going to show you some examples that I have in here the first one is going to be this one so you see here a nice illustration which is an image that I grabbed from the internet of an old vintage uh, illustration of a horse um, I made up a name so this is a little bit of branding for you too <laughs> so alago which means um, uh, horse in Greek uh, it's the modern Greek word for horse and um, I gave it a nice um, font I really didn't do much to it other than giving it a bit of an angle so it follows a little bit the direction of the illustration this illustration you can see in here uh, has a linear burn applied to it originally it was like this white background then I gave it a linear burn so you can see how well it works in the whole composition I think it's really really nice so I didn't do much more to it. I didn't put any perspective to the illustration or to this text. It's just looking at us, just like if we were right in front of the bottle. Uh, but I think it works even if it doesn't really have any kind of um, mesh applied to it or anything or perspective. Also because of the fact that this line is not straight. This is another reason why I gave this a little bit of an angle. And now we have this um, um, text in here, which obviously needs a little bit of um, perspective, so it follows the, the shape of the, of the bottle, okay? And I'm going to show you um, a different example that I have in here, like for example this one. Let's just uh, hide this. If you see this one here, you're going to see that the this uh, particular illustration, um, it, it, I didn't do anything to it either. It's just that um, the illustration itself, it's helping us to create the illusion of perspective. Just because this illustration happens to have this branch in here, which is drawn in perspective. So just the fact that I put it to the edge of the bottle is going to help us think it's uh, in perspective and it's following a little bit the shape of the of the bottle for the name ventre rouge which is french for red belly which is obvious <laughs> very intelligent of me because this is the the, the red belly of the toucan but it's also the red belly of the wine <laughs> so branding again branding <laughs> So yeah, um, we have this and you can see here I applied a little bit of perspective to this text, but I think I did it before I tweaked this. So I think that now it's a little bit exaggerated. So probably we'd be better off making it a little bit, just a slightly less curvy, something like that. Okay. Yes, now it's a matter of, you know, positioning things in the right place so everything works well together. Okay, this is another example and I have a third one, which would be this one, which well actually has mm, no difference, it's just that I like it. <laughs> just, I just love these illustrations and the way they work with, with this kind of mock-ups. Now have in mind that because this image and everything is masked, inside the label if I put it there you know like that and I go on like that okay you can start um, suggesting a bit of you know curviness and integration into the whole thing but um, obviously you would have to work this uh, text in here so it follows a bit the, um, the shape of the bottle probably the same with this because it's a bit flat and looking um, too uh, frontal um unfortunately you cannot do that uh, uh, up to this day at least in affinity designer you can do it in affinity photo so we're just gonna leave it like that but we are going to work this text in here 
which uh, yes, you can work and uh, to make it follow a bit the, the label. So for that, we're going to grab the lips tool. We're going to trace an lips like this, more or less. We're going to grab now the artistic text tool. We're going to click over the edge of the ellipse like that. And I'm going to say um, red line. I don't even know what I'm writing because I don't see it. I'm going to just pull it out, which will make my life easier. <laughs> Red wine, uh, yeah, red wine. Now, this for starters. Now, I'm going to tweak pulling these arrows so because I want it inside. Uh, there it goes inside the ellipse. Red wine. Now, I'm going to keep writing um, a bottle mock up. Now, I'm gonna pull this arrow here. Okay, and more or less that be it. Uh, if you find a hard time using these arrows here, just practice a bit. I also find it a bit awkward, but maybe it's because I don't understand exactly how it works. <laughs> Not that I use it a lot, but um, yeah, it's a matter of, I found out um, fumbling and, and so forth, that um, touching here and there, you're gonna find um, a way to, to just position your text where you want, okay? So I select the text. I think I'm going to make it more of the color that I used for the initial one. And also I'm going to change to Georgia. I love this Georgia. So here it goes. Um, I'm going to get rid of this. Yes. I'm going to place it here. And now you see Oh, it's still very flat. Hmm, easy to fix. I'm gonna push inwards. And I'm going to be just now playing with everything I have in here. So, pulling from the arrows, pulling from the bounding box. And now I finish the other part of the text in a Affinity Designer period. Okay, so something like that. So I think this is more or less it. It's not too bad. And with this, we are done. Let's just look from a distance. Of course, I need to tweak a bit the shadow to perfection it, um, but in any case, it's a matter of, you know, time until you get it right. That's better. Uh, I'm going to tweak just a few things here. I'm going to find many things that, you know, could be better, blah, blah. Basically, and, and, and just uh, wrapping up, uh, work with hierarchy of layers, work with gradients, transparencies, and cropping with pullings plus caution blur. And that's the whole mystery. So if you like this video, please leave me a comment with what you think. Leave me your artwork. I would love to see it. Um, join our Facebook group and for sure leave a comment or a like because that helps me. Adios.